Hello and welcome to what's new in Microsoft 365 and Copilot for September 2024. I'm Mark Thompson from supersimple365.com and on that note, if you do a search for Supersimple365, you can get updates on Twitter, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, go listen to the podcast, go and read the blog and maybe go over to the blog and then sign up for the newsletter. We've got updates for Copilot, Forms, uh, OneDrive, SharePoint, Teams, and a couple from around 365. There's loads more over on the blog, so make sure you go and have a look at it afterwards. Go and have a look at the video notes, and then you can click over and read all about all the little details that I've not included on here. Let's start off with Copilot. New Copilot Compose experience is coming to Outlook. So on the screen here, I've got the existing experience, and there's nothing wrong with it, but the new one is a little bit nicer. So here we've got our text at the top, so we've highlighted it, and you can see there's the controls. Let's see what we've got. Look at that, it's just a little bit nicer and cleaner, isn't it? And we've got, uh, here we say, uh, we want to track change, uh, you know, keep it discard, and some of the controls down there. And if you swipe down, you see a little bit more. Functionally, it is unchanged, and this applies to all these versions of Outlook if you have a Copilot license. Due late September to late November 2024. So quite a big window, uh, but that'll be coming along soon for you. Okay, just a note uh, for Forms users, you you might remember that the um, the ex experience for syncing with Excel has changed. So you can tell it to sync with, with Excel. Then every time you open it, uh, it goes off and it gets it gets the latest uh, the latest responses. Well, that changes some stuff behind the scenes. So if you um, if you've been using the previous functionality, the previous way it worked, and you you do have something that picks those um, the, the, those results out of Excel then you need to make some changes. Okay, I'm not gonna go into it here, but if you go and read the blog, uh, and you go to, to forms, or do a search for, for forms over on the website, I've got some links on there that'll take you off some Microsoft links that will that tell you what you need to do. You've got a little bit of time, but definitely worth you going and checking that out. Okay, so on to OneDrive. OneDrive on Windows prompts to confirm deletion of shared files. Let's have a look at this. So you got uh, shared files, and you go to delete it, and it's just reminding you just in case you delete something that someone else is using. And if they are, maybe it shouldn't be in your OneDrive in the first place, but that is a matter for your organization. Uh, and also the uh, deleting large amounts of uh, or mass deletions, that uh, interface is changing slightly, so it already does it, but that's changing. I can't be honest, folks, I don't have a before and after. Uh, and you probably, probably won't even notice. But there you go. Uh, I think the main event there is the uh, deletion of uh, shared items uh, prompt. Uh, due late September to late October. It's going to be a quick one this month, folks. I think there's like a knock-on effect from... Um, from the summer holidays or vacation, depending on where you live in the world. Uh, I think it's like a knock on effect of not that much happening or certainly not much for me to tell my audience about. SharePoint, let's see what we've got. More EU countries added to. SharePoint is getting a PDF electronic signature service. So there's a whole load of um, new countries in the EU that have been added to this. So America had this some time ago, right? And then they announced uh, Canada, uh, UK and EU. Well, they've just added a whole load, load, load of new countries. Surprisingly, France and Italy weren't in the first batch. But if you want to go and have a look at whether that applies to you, go and check that out, folks, over on the blog. I've added at the top, I've highlighted which countries are new. So that should be nice and easy for you to read. Available in the US already, coming to uh, Canada, UK and the EU October-ish. So that looks good if that's your thing. Microsoft Teams. I told you it was going to be quick this month. Okay. Some things to consider here. So the um, just a reminder of some recent changes um, to channels. The uh, general channel is going. So you'll know that when you create a new team, you no longer get a general channel. There's something called the first channel that you need to name. Uh, and if you now rename the general channel, you can't change it back to, to rename. So that's what that, you can't re change it back to, to general, sorry. Um, you're getting a new view of your teams and channels. The new onboarding experience is coming. So when you join a team, the only channel that you will see is the uh, is the first channel, whatever that is now called. Uh, and you remember, you can hide that channel. There's a few more on the screen. You can see those. But I've got some thoughts on this. What do you do with this first channel? Bear in mind, we don't have the general channel anymore. 
I'm leaning towards having the first channel as a welcome channel or an onboarding channel, whatever that term works for your organization. Um, you have all the information about, about the different channels in there, uh, maybe some instructions for people who aren't great with Teams, how to how to show a channel, how to turn on notifications. And then once they consider themselves onboarding, they can then hide that channel for themselves once they've shown all the others. So just some thoughts there, but definitely worth you checking out what's happening with channels at the moment. Volume ratio settings for Teams meeting participants using language interpretation. So let's assume that your meeting organizer has set up uh, interpretation. You've got all your languages set up. It knows who the um, interpreters are. We go to the left hand side, we click on more language and speech. We say we'd like language interpretation. So you can see down here, we're going to choose to listen to the meeting in Japanese. And now we can we can turn the volumes up or down so we hear what matters to us. I think that's a great piece of functionality. Um, you can see there, oh, I've clicked a little bit ahead. You can see there, we, we, on the left-hand side, you, you turn on interpretation, uh, and then on the right-hand side there, you choose your volumes. So that looks great, folks. Uh, should be here by late November. Add a location to your presence in Microsoft Teams. So I've been talking for quite a while about, in Outlook, um, work hours and location, so WHL. And Microsoft very kindly provide lots of uh, lots of screenshots when they when they share these updates in the Message Center, and I'm very grateful uh, to them for doing that. Now, quite often you would see different buildings in there, so not just it didn't just say home or office; it uh, it, it would have a building, and um, something I'm, I just don't have a, a a big awareness of. It just doesn't come into my into my into my world for whatever reason. Is Microsoft Places, and that's where that get, that that is set up apparently. Anyway, assume your organization uses Microsoft Places, then in your work hours and location, you can choose a building. Uh, people can, can view this within Teams or with, uh, with an Outlook. You can see on the screen here, we've clicked on our, on our, uh, on our disk with our initials or our photograph. Uh, we, we've done our location and we can add a building, but the ad building needs to have been previously added by your organization. If your organization are using that, I think that is Great, I, I would love that. Certainly, um, a couple of the uh, the main clients that I work with with lots of different buildings. I think that'd be epic. So you rock up at work, and you can see in Outlook, it's going to show you as well. It's going to show you who's in the same building as you. I think that's great. But Microsoft Places uh, is needed, and that, folks, is due by mid November. Enhance query suggestions when searching for people in Teams, and this might be quite subtle, uh, but it might be useful to you. So you can see here on the screen, we've searched for Charlotte and marketing, and we're getting better suggestions. So it's suggesting Charlotte the Crumb and marketing in all, in all results. So it knows who I work with, and it knows the sort of things that I do. So it's trying to make better suggestions and help you make better searches. So folks, late, November, late October for that one. What do we have? A new view of your teams and channels is coming to teams. This actually looks quite good. So it's one of those things where you think there's nothing wrong with what you've got until you see a better way. So just a reminder. So we go to the teams, uh, teams app and teams on the, uh, the app bar on the left, click on the three little dots and say, we'd like to look at our teams and channels. And this is what we're going to get. So let me click on one more so I can, I can compare them for you. Now the top one, folks, is the new version, and this smaller inset here is the old. So the ratio, like size-wise, is about the same, right? Look at the, look, your teams; it's about the same, isn't it? Maybe a little bit smaller down here, uh, which accentuates what I'm saying. Actually, but it, it makes the point even, even, even more valid. So across top, we've got similar things. Now look at all the space here. This whole, this whole section here, that we're losing for the create team bar. OK, I did this section here, whereas in a new version that's getting put at the top. Look at this up out of the way. That's cool. Now look at all the space here for this for, 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 um, for the column names, name, description, remember, and then eventually it gets on to the, the, the name of the team, the description. Uh, and there's a there's not I'm losing part of the, the team name. I'm losing part of the description. Now let's look at this at the top. So it's a little bit more compact. 
So I get the comp I get the team name at the top, so I can see the whole name. And very quickly, like just small here, I got public, the amount of members, how many channels, a description there, and then on the right hand side, it shows me my role, a member or an owner. So I think that's better, right? So it's just it's just making much better use of the space. And look at how many uh, the the overview there I've got of my teams. That's cool. Now. Uh, the updated uh, channel uh, management. I'm going to do a similar thing here. So let's come down here. Let's have a quick look on the left hand side. So I've got uh, I've got I've got this team here again. I'm losing all this space at the top. All this real estate at the top. Then I've got some channel names, and I've got like all this space that's kind of not being used very well. Why don't we look over here? So. We, very quickly, we've got all of these channels. We can see where they've been recommended uh, when the, there was act, the last activity was in there. So that's useful. At a glance, last activity two minutes ago. That might be worth me looking. If that said, if that said that last activity three months ago, then that might not be worth me even looking at. But look at this. So um, I, very quickly, I can see the description. And on the right-hand side, I've got the option to show it. I click on the three little dots and I'll learn more. So just a quick, a quick couple of changes there. Um, they might seem quite small, but they're quite good, folks. Um, late October for those changes. <gasps> We're almost there already. It's a real quick one, right? So around 365, new Microsoft Planner for the web. So we talked about this maybe a year ago, right? It might, might even be longer. So first of all, we've got the new Planner app in Teams, didn't we? And there's been a difference between the, 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 the app in Teams and uh, Planner on the web. Uh, so what are we getting here? So we're getting some um, some features from to do a planner um, project and copilot are getting involved into the new into the new app. This looks great. The restoring of deleted tasks. How many times has someone deleted a task and it's just gone? So I think that's great. Um, a few features will be deprecated. It's worth having a look at the blog actually because quite a few things are going. I was a bit surprised how much is actually going. Um, uh, some notifications are being emerged and you and on the blog i've got a couple of things which are highlighted a couple of things which it's not getting yet but will come soon but i think the main takeaway here is is that the your experience in teams will match the experience in in the browser so they, they're getting synced up and from a, a user point of view i think about i use planner literally every day i'm a big fan of it and when i'm when i'm, when I'm trying to get people to engage with it and use it um i think if i was new if it was my first day using it I think it'd be handy for those or better for, for those things to be the same. So that's a good thing, I think. Uh, due, folks, late November. Start of the month. I can't be honest. I don't really have a start of the month from the updates I've given you. Um, it's a bit of a meh month, isn't it? It's just not great. But I do want to tell you about this. So if you watched, if you go, you go check out the blog, Copilot section at the top, you'll see... Um, it was uh, the announcement for the Copilot Wave 2. And just a note on that, by the way, if you look at the blog, you'll see the Copilot section is a bit smaller. If, um, if there's a Copilot feature for Word, it'll be, now, it'll, be, it'll be further down. If there's one for SharePoint or Teams, it'll be in Teams or SharePoint. So as it becomes just a part of the, the, the of those apps, I've now moved it to that section. Be interested to see whether that's the right thing to, to do or not. But I think if you're a SharePoint person, then you get the, all that in one place rather than seeing all the co-pilot stuff in one place and trying to pick out what matters to you. If, you, if you're big into Teams, then maybe it suits you. I don't know. I, I don't actually think there's a, a right or wrong way. But we'll see. Anyway, start of month. Um, in that wave two, they showed us a co-pilot in, co in Outlook. And there's the option there to prioritize my inbox. And I even know I'll be telling you about this further down the line. I think that's my start of the month. Just the thought that you come back off two weeks holiday, you've got 25 gazillion emails, and you can just set to Copilot, prioritize my e inbox. It knows who your boss is. It knows what's urgent. It knows what, you know, which things are basically on fire that you need to sort out. And I just think that's going to be such a great way to come back to work and just a little bit less stress. So that's my start of the month, folks, even though it's not really in this month. I'll tell you more about it soon. That's it. That, that's all I've got for you this month. Now, if you're feeling a bit shortchanged, go and have a look at the blog. There's loads on there, loads of updates. Um, when you look at the blog, also click back and have a look at August as well, because these the updates come out over a few months, don't they? So it's definitely worth you knowing what was coming out uh, last month as well. But that's it, folks. Hopefully that was helpful, and I'll see you next month.